I'm sure you've all seen the wheat fields around Walla Walla. <laughs> Unless you teleported it into this auditorium, <laughs> in which case you should also be giving a TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> this talk is about technology, on some level. But unlike teleportation, aquaponics is not some complex or inaccessible idea. This is about four students, Danielle, Maddie, Erica, and myself. An incredible opportunity and most importantly, why it matters to this community. But you're asking, where's the ocean? And why the wheat fields? To answer these questions, I'd like to ask more questions. Why did we start the process of bringing aquaponics to it? The answer is simple. We want more local food available year round to students. To make this happen, we need to find the equilibrium two questions. Why do we eat food? The answers are numerous, but usually it has to do with being hungry, the basic need to feed ourselves, because we're told we should, it's good for us, or because it's just delicious. These reasons can often contradict each other. There's a lot of advice out there about how to eat, but the second and perhaps more interesting question is why do we grow food? Why do farmers get up every day to plant and hoe and weed and harvest and rake and plant and hoe and harvest? Honestly, <laughs> I grew up under a mother who put me out to work in the garden every summer, and I can't answer that question. For many farmers, like those involved in weed, it's a tradition, passed down through generations, if not through blood, then at least through the land. The land in Walla Walla has been worked for a long time. We grow food here because it makes sense to grow food. Through this project, our group wants what and how we grow to make as much sense as what we need. Despite the culture and the community we have here, it can still be hard to source certain things locally, especially when it comes to providing enough food for an entire college campus. I recently learned that our own environmentally conscious dining service, which I love, struggles to provide even 20% of its food from local sources. The worst part of this problem is that it's no one's fault. Our school year is planned around the times when things are only just starting to grow, which is a great way to keep people in the library and out of the garden. But what scares me even more than the lack of local food on campus is the idea that it could perhaps be easier to have food brought to us instead of grown right here. Bananas aside, Walla Walla is a great place to grow food. <laughs> the problem comes not only from season, but from scale. Big scale operations and conglomerates are at the middle of markets and often choose to ship their food far away for cheaper processing and distribution. Small scale operations can't always keep up with the demand. Too often, scale limits the local and the sustainable. Practices that were once natural, like fishing, have become especially degraded to our environment because of scale. Just because there is no fault, however, does not mean there's not a solution. We started our project because we want more local food available year-round to students, but our efforts won't stop on the three-block radius we call on campus. Much of our country has moved away from a small-scale sustainable agriculture model, but there are still examples in our area it's up to us to decide if this is important. So the question is, do you want more local food available year round? It can't just be done by wheat farms. We're not trying to reform supply and demand or ask those who sacrifice so much for the wonderful tradition of growing one's own food to do the impossible. We're bringing the problem for the food closer to us. But still, what can a few college do to make the connection between local and sustainable and food production on a large scale? We think the answer lies in aquaponics. Fish and plants together. That pretty much sums it up. A <laughs> deeper explanation is much more insightful. Aquaponics is the combination of two common practices, that of aquaculture and that of hydroponics. Aquaculture means fish farm, and usually it involves raising fish in tanks. Hydroponics is the process of growing plants in water without soil 
by adding specific nutrients to the water to replace the content of soil. Both result in massive yields, but they're essentially unsustainable. These practices arose from a depletion of the environment, which necessitated an artificial creation of space to continue harvesting these plants and animals. Aquaponics combines these two unsustainable practices and makes them more sustainable. It's not teleportation, but that's pretty magical. There's also some science behind it all. I'm going to show you a couple crudely run slides of just one of the many ways you can set up an aquaponics system. I think this is one of the clearest designs in terms of explaining the process as a whole, although my drawings might suggest otherwise. It starts with a fish tank, and they produce waste, which is the polite term for poop. I'd rather just say poop, because waste makes it sound like it's useless. This poop contains essential nutrients for the plants, but first they need to be made accessible. There is ammonia and nitrogen in the fish byproduct, which if built up to high enough levels in the tank, could become toxic for the fish. This byproduct is thus transferred to a clarifier and a biofilter, which use bacteria to make the nutrients in the poop accessible. Plants like things like nitrogen, and a host of helpful bacteria in the clarifying tank and biofilter help reconstitute the nutrients in the fish poop, the ammonia and the nitrates present, into nitrite, which is an accessible form of nitrogen for the plants and safe for the fish. This nutrient-rich water, a sort of liquid soil, is then transferred, or in some cases pumped, to plant grow beds, where plants are grown hydroponically, with their roots hanging down in the water. The plants take up the good nutrients in this water, and then it's clean enough to be circulated back to the fish tank. The environmental footprint of an aquaponic system is significantly less than that of a similar sized soil-based system, because water stays in the tanks, and if you got a little bit of fish poop, it can provide all of the nutrients found in soil. There are three most notable reasons why aquaponics is sustainable. The first has to do with water use. Water should be circulated using only about a tenth of the water that water that would be used in a similar sized soil-based system. In addition, growing in water allows a higher stocking density meaning you can put more plants in a smaller space. The second important part of sustainability for aquaponics has to do with chemical use. Fish, plants, and bacteria provide most of the nutrients you would otherwise get from fertilizers or other artificial additives. The third, and perhaps most tangible point of sustainability has to do with distance. Food has to travel a long way to get to your table, especially if you want out-of-season produce. Aquaponics can circumvent nature if it's in a controlled environment. This is as local as it gets. You know what your fish eat? You know what your plants eat? You know what you eat? So, how are we going to make this happen at a small college like ours? We have a specific vision. There's a plot of land just down the street that students have begun to cultivate uh, behind a college on cuts uh, that we've begun to cultivate with the intention of selling what we grow there for the dining hall service. If we're good stewards of the land, it's our hope to expand on this project by building a greenhouse that might eventually contain our aquaponic system. While our design is important, we have a larger vision for the idea of aquaponics. What we do down the street is important, but it means nothing if we don't consider how this builds out to our town, or our state, or for that matter, our country. How can Walla Walla make aquaponics design even better? It has to do with community. We want school to play a key role in this project. In our vision, local professors and educators can make aquaponics a part of their lesson plan. Imagine biology laboratories that involve running pH tests on fish tank weather, or experiment with pH regulation by using natural base buffers like eggshells. Imagine elementary schools bringing their classrooms on field trips to inspire the next generation of local consumers. Imagine other college students coming to attend free workshops on how to start up their own systems. One of our biggest how questions has been how can a constantly changing environment, like that of a college campus, make this as sustainable as possible, in the fullest sense of the word. This means not only do we think of it low emissions, but longevity. 
If we want true sustainability, it means that our efforts will last well beyond the time here we have at school. The house that I mentioned in front of the plot represents an answer to this, through sustainable design. We want this house to be a place where students looking to live off campus will move in order to continue to give back to the community, ensuring the system stays in dialogue with our campus and ultimately that it's well monitored and maintained. Who wouldn't want a giant garden and a fish tank in their backyard? <laughs> no? <laughs> we think that this model could be applied to countless other organizations or communities where they're constantly growing and changing, just like our school is. Obviously, these ideas are intertwined with many invisible steps that precede them. But everything we do, big and small, is just as important as the day we put the first fish in the tank. We realized early on in the process that we might not see this through to completion in our time at school. We may just be the start the first in a series of building blocks and conversations towards an actual aquaponics system. So why do it? Like any good college student with an underdeveloped prefrontal cortex, <laughs> we just jump right into it. It's that enthusiasm that's important. What we have greatest access to is an ignorant enthusiasm. We only have four years as students, if we can even squeeze that in. During these four years, we have tremendous opportunities through access to technology and human resources to explore progressive outlets and create sustainable concepts for ourselves and our community. This project is worth fighting for because it can be truly sustainable. Water use is significantly reduced compared to other methods for raising these plants and animals. Waste isn't wasted, it's integrated, and nothing comes out but your fish, your plants, and what the sun takes back through evaporation. And it can be run year round. This is a big deal. We started with a vacant lot, an unremarkable patch of grass in an alleyway, four people, and an idea. These things can be found everywhere our cities, our communities, our homes. And these are the places we've connected. We've reached out to our peers, professors, the city officials, the Department of Fish and Wildlife, local electricians and builders seeking support and resources. We've been at the skepticism at times, but more and more people want to listen. Our community can make aquaponics happen because the dialogue is open and the distance is small. These are the same reasons we can make aquaponics bigger than just fish and plants. It starts with our larger area, one whose history is one who understands and supports local agriculture, who can answer the tough questions, provide the right feedback, and donate a healthy perspective without getting bogged down by distance. Distance relates directly to our city and this community and this neighborhood. An electrician who we asked for an estimate happened to live next door. We asked him if the greenhouse would be blocking his view. We can walk to City Hall to get on the agenda Local is where the sustainable can be found, not some organic lettuce bag shipped from temperate climates sustainable, but fish and plants in your backyard sustainable. It even reaches that far down the line to our homes, our schools, and this plot of land. This is the microcosm of ecology, of aquaponics in action, people sharing information and ideas for the benefit of all in a small space where we have tangible means to test these ideas. Last semester, we started as a group of four students coming together independently with an interest in sustainable agriculture. Three months ago, we were getting our first design ideas together, building our estimates. Two months ago, we submitted our first loan proposal. One month ago, we resubmitted that loan proposal. Last week, we were circulating petitions to generate student interest, exploring passive solar ideas for our greenhouse, and building the blog site. This week will bring its own set of challenges and new developments, but every day more information is being shared and more ideas are being tested. Our community can make aquaponics happen because the dialogue is open, as I've said, and the distance is small. This is just the start of a dialogue across the nation, and our community can lead the way. There is an ocean 
and these big fields. Or at least we think there can be. Our area and areas like ours across the globe can take action in making year-round local agriculture a sustainable venture. First, it involves finding space and preparing that space. Second, it involves choosing a configuration that works best for your planning and environment. Third, it involves an openness to feedback, whether that's from your system or your community. We know this won't be smooth the first time through. It's a living, breathing system that I've only just touched on here. There are many possible configurations, and we didn't even get started on pH balancing or cycling. But if we four students could get this far, then certainly others can. Our location, however, cannot go without credit. Small, connected community is integral to the success of such a project at any scale. The wonderful reality of aquaponics is that it's very adaptable. We can have a sustainable ocean in eastern Washington, and this is a radical idea. This is the beginning of what we hope will be a larger effort. But we realize that everyone may not be equally interested in fish and plants. Nevertheless, everyone has something to contribute, be it an overhead power estimate or a design idea. We think food and community should go hand in hand, just like we think that tilapia and green should be grown in tandem. This presentation doesn't mark the end of a successful project, but the beginning of a movement in communities like ours to bring people closer to their